Awesome. So hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. So my name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN and I am super excited to have a great and amazing speaker for today, Laura Jackson Liu. So Laura, she will discuss how to master the three M's of dynamic messaging. But before she comes to our virtual stage this morning, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So I see we have a lot of first timers here on the call. We just want to let you know that Entrepreneurs International Network or EIN. It's an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education. It will help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education and networking session during our Q&As and we have a gratitude circle where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. We also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network and to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs International Network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. I will uh, put those link in the chat so you can just click on them and check it later. And if you also go to our official website, eintalks.com, you will be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you will be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event, it'll run for 90 minutes or one hour and 30 minutes and we'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes and um, after that, we'll have 15 minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by, uh, by 10.30 a.m. Pacific. So with that, let's go to our gorgeous speaker today, Laura Jackson Liu. She is an international speaker and international best-selling author. Having given over 500 talks and presented to thousands, she brings 35 years of leadership expertise in guiding clients in unlocking greater potential. So Laura is a life transformed certified coach and executive mentor. And so I'm thrilled to have Laura on our stage to share with us her amazing talk and how we can benefit from the three M's of dynamic messaging in our business. Laura, the stage is all yours. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And thank you everybody for being here. I so appreciate your time and really coming to what I hope is um, going to be a marvelous uh, awareness insight to your message, your business, your passion, and really your purpose on the planet. With that, I'm going to hopefully successfully share my PowerPoint. <laughs> here we go. And let me, okay, give me one second here. So I'm trying to get over here. Let me move the bar. There you go. All righty. Okay, can everybody see that? My PowerPoint. All right, fabulous. Yes, fabulous. thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So here we are. I'm going to just jump right in. And if my cursor will... All right, here we go. So we're going to go through a few things today. I'm going to tell you what the three M's are that we're going to share, which is really, um, I'm going to give it to you early, your mission, your message, and your market. Uh, and I'm going to explain kind of how I got to this point. I am sorry for the technical challenges here. There we go. Um, 
you already got some of my background here, but what I want to share too is that I spent a lot of years in corporate. Um, I have worked with individual entrepreneurs. I have worked with corporations like Mobile Oil Corporation before they, you know, joined with Exxon and small businesses, so really all all sizes and nonprofits. Um, which is, you know, where my heart is with a lot of nonprofits as well. And I want to begin today, really before I get into some of this, you know, to share more about messaging, to tell you about my story. So I don't know if any of you have felt like this. This is obviously not a picture of me, but this challenge over time of like, why are we really on the planet? What is it that we are you know, trying to really share? Who do we wanna share that with? Um, so my story began many years ago um, and beginning to work with different groups. This was not the path that I thought that I was on, of course, as life goes. And what began to pop up, whether it was, let's say, a, you know, an event or a project or an organization or a nonprofit, in my mind was, who are you? What's your message? And who's your audience? Which is very closely tied to the three M's. Here I am many, 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 many years later, kind of, you know, honing in now on the messaging. That was the foundation of everything. And so with myself, not realizing that I was an entrepreneur many years ago um, when I began, you know, this long journey before they had entrepreneurial programs. Um, over time, I found myself kind of coaching and consulting, you know, with individuals, with organizations. And imagine how excited I was to finally um, embrace branding for myself after I had helped, you know, organizations do this, you know, what am I really about? And that's my move the mission model. And I'll share that with you in a little bit. So here I am, I'm on a mastermind call. I've jumped on um, with an organization and I, I share a little bit about what I do. And this woman says, you know, I really see your passion. I, I you know, I feel that but I have no idea what you do, like based on what I'd said. And so imagine how, you know, maybe you have felt like that in that moment, just absolutely crumbled. Um, I was excited about my branding. I was excited about my model. Move is an acronym. So I had proceeded to tell them about that instead of really my audience and the benefits. And so I share this to say, you know, probably everybody here, we have been on this journey of, how do we get our message out there? How do we impact more people? How do we help more people? Because I think that's something that we are all really looking to do. So that's a little bit about what got me here to this. The key today is that your messaging drives your entire business. Everything that you do, everything that you say, how you communicate with your people, what you communicate, your messaging is behind all of that. And as I was just sharing 40 years, I began to see this theme with almost everybody that I worked with. And, you know, mission statements that are a couple paragraphs, uh, that's, that's not a mission statement. That's not the kind of mission statement that you want, right? Um, they're not even clear in their messaging. They're not clear on their sound bites and, and those kinds of things. And really honing in on what's the key language and what's the key language and the right language for your market, right? For your audience, your market. I'll be using that kind of interchangeably. And maybe all of you here, one of you here, some of you here have wrestled with these things, you know, feeling like your message isn't getting through, right? I, I'm not going to tell you how many years I spent there, but again, realizing it's an evolution. So maybe you've wrestled with, you know, feeling like your message isn't reaching your clients or it's not connecting with them. You're not growing your community and you know you're here for a purpose, right? You, you or your team members, maybe your team members aren't able to actually articulate exactly what you're here to do. Um, and then how do you turn your passion and your mission into your messaging? Maybe that's this overwhelming thing, you know, that, that you're carrying. That's what are we going to do with, you know, all of this? Now I've got my purpose, but how do we, you know, really translate that into all the messaging? Um, maybe you've hired people. Some of the people I've worked with um, have hired people and still not gotten that crystallized message. And I'm going to share with you just a number of things that some clients have said today to try to give you an understanding that it is possible 
It doesn't have to take forever um, and you don't have to keep struggling. So the three M's we're gonna talk about and also the three C's, how do you really clarify, create a clarifying message one that's compelling and one that's going to convert. I mean, most of us, you know, we want to do our passion and we would also like to be funded for that, right? We're looking to make an income to maybe it's multiple streams of income. And so how do we really convey that in a really clear and crisp manner? And, you know, do you have a one sentence introduction? I mean, forget about the 30 second and the 60 second, you know, elevator speeches. What about encapsulating everything in one sentence. And that's very possible. I've helped many people do that. So here we go with the three M's, your mission, your message, and your market. So as I said, your mission is, you know, before you even get to your, your mission statement, it's really translating all of your passion and purpose, why you're here into your mission and allowing that to drive everything you do. And your message, how do we create those clear and converting messages that you can, you know, share with your audiences in a lot of different mediums, right? Email marketing, um, social media posts, memes, all, all these kinds of ways in your talks, in your eBooks, in the things that you create. Uh, and your market is all of this kind of, you know, fitting together. It's all got to correlate. So your mission is the foundation of everything that you do and what you're about. Your mission statement, as I like to say, is a living, breathing statement, not something that you put in a nice picture frame in the wall that is going to collect, you know, physical dust or, you know, if it's online, collecting digital dust, right? So this is the, again, the encapsulation of everything that you stand for. And I'd like to share uh, Peter Drucker, just a moment about him, who's really known as like the father of, of modern management. And let me see if I can move this over and, and share a little bit about this. Now, when you think about hospitals and, and or you think about ERs, you think about healthcare. And so looking, when you look at your mission statement, really boiling it down to something that's simple, something that's clear. Even he states, it's not about clever languaging. Um, it doesn't need to be complex. That's your vision, your strategic objectives, and you know all those and moving forward. That's your whole strategic plan. And so a lot of people might think that you know the hospital's mission is about healthcare. Well, he says, our mission is to give assurance to the afflicted. So when you think about that, boiling that down, what is it really about? We don't go to hopefully the hospital for health care. Hopefully we're doing that on our own, as he's saying, you and I take care of our, our health. So that's one big example. And this is from one of my clients, actually two of my clients are business partners, and they had been in business for a number of years. Now, imagine that years. And kind of kind of knew you know who they who their target market was a little bit about their message, but what we did in an hour and fifteen minutes, I had a Zoom call with them, in an hour and fifteen minutes, they both had their own statement, which were tailored because the one woman worked more with professional female entrepreneurs, and the other one worked more with spiritual female entrepreneurs. So we gave them an introductory sentence. When you're networking, when you're having a conversation, when someone asks you what you do, you I, I don't, you know, forgive me for, you know, stating the obvious, you're not going to read your mission statement. Um, you don't want to be talking for 15 minutes and you don't want to be doing some of the things that some of us did many years ago, right? You want that clear, crisp, one sentence introduction. And imagine we got everything in that um, in an hour and 15 minutes. And I was thrilled to help them and they were very happy. Let's just say that they were able to achieve that. Now, your, your message, really getting your message out there, and I've been sharing about that. How do you crystallize that? How do you make it compelling? How do you, you know, make that converting language that's really going to, you know, when your people hear that message, they're going to want to find you, right? You're not going to be out there hunting for more people to help saying, where are the people that I'm here to serve? They're going to find you when your message is crystal clear. Obviously, this woman is super excited that she has finally nailed hers. Um, so your message is really key. And there's a lot of forms of, you know, your messages. So when you think about it, 
what are the action verbs? Have you sat down and really made a list? You know, what are the things that you want to inspire people with? You know, what, what do those action verbs look like? What are some of your sound bites that you've developed or you could develop? You know, what about your brand languaging? What are some, you know, key phrases and things that you're already using? Um, these are the kinds of things that you kind of aggregate all of this or what I do. I see this as a puzzle, really, I'll tell you. And I, I get this information and then I sit there and I work with that when I work with people. I'm like, OK, let's look at this. And how about this? And what is the generation of all of your talk titles? Right. What are what are your offers? What are your program titles so that we can get a big picture of, you know, all of all of their brand, all of their offerings, and then begin to kind of synthesize that and clarify that. And out of that, what are your core messages? Because your core messages lead into your eBooks. They lead into your talks. They lead, in, lead into your teaching and your training, right? Those messages that you're really embodying. Okay, you've got your mission, but now how are you going to deliver it? What are those core pieces? Uh, this is from another young lady who happens to be on, on the call today. Uh, extraordinary background, Diane Alexander, an extraordinary, lovely individual and professional. Um, looking at her offering and your voice and really claiming your voice and your confidence, the known as the confidence catalyst. So we were able to really take um, some of her pieces and say, how do we turn these around to create, let's say, new talk titles? How do we turn this around to create? Again, we worked on and created a one sentence introduction that really kind of synthesizes everything there. So listen, let me tell you something as and I'll just um, stop this and hope I can like hop back on here. My system is running really slow today. Sorry, maybe it's a super duper PowerPoint. We are all in business to make an impact, right? And one of the things that happens is when we have all of this um, information that we just want to help people and we want to, you know, give to the our clients and our future clients um, is we just sometimes you want to share everything. And so it's important to kind of step back and go, how do we break up this information? How do we say this can go into a book or this can be another talk title, having more than one talk title? We're beginning to lay out all of your training. Um, you know, your one sentence introduction is to say, you know, hey, let's connect with, you know, somebody and see if there's more of a discussion here. Um, those are the kinds of things that we want to do. And when you begin to really get clear in your information, you can break that up right? You're not trying to like give everybody everything. You know, I know I can, I can go as fast as some of my coaching clients can go. Um, and, and sometimes I've got to probably more times than not, I've got to slow down when I'm working with somebody long-term. Okay. Let's work on this piece and this piece. So part of what we're looking at here is how do we break this down and give this in pieces and really maybe develop some more programs and develop some more training such that we can, you know, um, create an entire offering instead of just trying to give everything at once. So your one sentence introduction is really is really about, you know, just getting somebody's attention and finding out if there's synergy there. All right. Let me hop back on. And you decided to find your own place again. Don't we love technology? I'm obviously a messaging person and not a technology person. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yay. <laughs> so thank you, Diane, for this. This was just lovely. And to be able to help people and work with people, thank you. <laughs> it is, there's nothing better. There's nothing better when you can help somebody who you know and love and work with solve something. And I think everybody here like can, can share that. Um, so here it is. Here's your market. And they are all following you, right? They are all following you. There's the arrow to the right, because now your message is crystal clear. Um, and when you look at your, ta your target market or your target audience, it's being aware of a couple of key things to really be able to connect with them. Uh, in order to, let's say, build funnels and write copy and, you know, another aspect of what I do, 
I've got to know the the audience's top challenges, really like where where are they stuck? What are they really dealing with? What's at the top? And the way you do this is through market research. You've got to be super clear if you've already worked with enough people that you know that. And we want to know what are their goals? What are their aspirations? You know, what are their dreams that they really want to achieve? And then be aware of, you know, what is it that's really driving them? Are they trying to bring in money? Are they trying to create greater impact? Maybe like some of us, right? Are they trying to increase their sales? Are they trying to grow their credibility? Because when I do PR and strategy for clients, it, you know, I need to know which one of those is really at the top of the list. May It, it can be all of them. But what's their driving force? Let's say for getting a new book launch for one client out there, I needed to know which one of these was their prime motivation, because that is absolutely going to drive how I go out and do PR for them, right? So here's, here's a, this is a biggie right here, right? On the slide, is your mission and your message a match for your market? Now, why do I say that? Because some of us did indeed struggle with this for years. You know, how do you think it is that I'm here helping people with this? You know, we're helping people with things that we know innately well, that we've had ridiculously, ridiculous experience with. And for me, you know, the, this is it, right? So you can have an amazing mission, but if you haven't matched it with your market, um, it's not going to jive or it's, you're not going to make that kind of impact that you have always wanted to. So that is absolutely really key. And your languaging and your messaging, right? Your languaging is part of your messaging. Is it right for your target market or do you have your target market, but you don't know how to speak their language? That can be another one. That can be another biggie. Um, this was a another delightful woman who I've had the honor and the pleasure of working with, Julie Quinn. And it it's really puts me in awe when I hear that people have worked with other, you know, well-known professionals uh, to help them, let's say, with their branding or with their messaging, and it hasn't worked. I mean, they're not where they have wanted to be. Um, so just to highlight some of the pieces of what she said, you know, how does she wants to inspire her audience to action, right? To be able to really hear what it is that she's got. How to craft the right messages, again, that inspire that action. And how everything supports your overarching mission, as I say, and how to compel them to really not only listen and get excited, but engage. We all know, we've probably heard speakers in the past or, you know, growing up and and they were great. We were so excited. And I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but as every day passes, we lose an extreme percentage of what they actually said. That's why it's not just inspiring people, but it's inspiring them to action, right? How do we move them to take action, which is going to help them really integrate and distill everything that you have just conveyed? I mean, that's, that's the number one goal, right? not just to motivate, but to motivate them to action. Um, I work collaboratively. When I do consulting, everything is collaborative. It is, it is all together. We're all working as a team. And I hope to inspire that in organizations that I work with to really um, forget about your hierarchy, forget about your levels, but everybody come together and then figuring out how to do that within the teams as well. Um, authentic expression of her passion and her mission that's what she wanted so that, again, she can serve the people in, in her community, in her growing community that she wants to, to grow. So another, another individual that, you know, trying to put all the pieces together. There's still a piece, and I've kind of alluded to it and maybe shared it earlier. There's a missing piece, and we've got the three M's now, right? Mission, message, and market. But there's another piece, and that piece is alignment. All of these pieces have to be aligned. You know, you can't have a message here and, and you decide something over here that doesn't match, but this is your market and this one may speak to your market, but that one may not. Um, once you put these pieces together, that's why it's, it's almost like, you know, seeing the whole puzzle and all of the languaging and the programs and the talk titles and the course and whatnot and your sound bites. So you look at this and, and to make sure that everything is aligned and working in harmony. 
So here's a couple more examples um, in it without going, see, I'm giving you some, you know, examples and some feedback. Um, we, we don't have a ton of time for training today. That, that would just take us way, way too deep. But this is to give you a feel for how absolutely unbelie unbelievably important all of this is. Um, this was a young woman who had one business and she realized that she was kind of talking to um, some of her clients or clients were talking to her and she, you know, it was just a natural segue into creating a coaching business. Uh, so we began, she did work with a branding individual. And so I was kind of working in, in, in harmony with what they were creating. And we looked at, you know, who, who is your target audience? You know, what is your vision? What, what do you want to accomplish? Uh, by the way, she is a self-care expert and fun coach. Now imagine that. How many adults do you know that need to have more fun, right? How often do we spend working? For those of you who are here who are entrepreneurs or business owners, how much, you know, how many hours in a day um, do you spend? And I, you know, I mean, we, we, yep, I'm with you. <laughs> so what a great offering she has and a way to really help people and help, you know, a certain, you know, her target audience, which is going to be female and within a certain age range and that kind of thing. Um, so we were able to really help her create that kind of foundation. Um, this was um, um, another beautiful woman and I helped her business. We began working together just before, I'm trying to think it was just before COVID shut down a number of businesses, including hers. Um, in the end, so we found a couple different ways to bring in income, including a PPP loan um, that her business qualified for. She was able to reopen her business, hire back her full, you know, her full staff, right, pre-pandemic, and increased her sales by 17%. Um, I would share that we only worked together for three months. So, you know, imagine what else would be possible. Imagine growing that, but creating that foundation. And again, talking to your people and finding out their gifts. That's what she did. She talked to the staff and said, you know, what, what are some aspects that you can do and that you're good at and you would enjoy doing? And how about over here? And pull that all together to, you know, come out of that um, at almost a 20% uh, increase from where they were a year prior. These are the kinds of things that are possible and more. Right. And more when you get super clear and aligned on all of these components. Um, this is another uh, amazing woman who is a retired colonel in the Air Force and also has a background with arts and nonprofits. I happen to be a musician um, of many more years than I would like to share. And uh, so she and I are passionate about music and the arts and about uh, boards of directors. And we stepped in to help one. Um, I ran a very extensive survey, got feedback, built a strategic planning session after that. Uh, she did use the word dysfunctional. Um, we, you learn things, right? When you begin to talk to the members of the board and you put, you know, you get feedback from the entire organization. It was all confidential. And you kind of learn some of the stuck points. And really the, the lack of infrastructure and foundation. It was a small nonprofit that um, really needs a lot of processes. They need people and, you know, without going into all of that. Um, I step in and I become part of the solution. It's just the way that I'm wired. Um, and again, my move the mission model really, you know, I kept coming back to, we are all in this, you know, together, how do we move the mission forward? How do we move your mission forward and work together as one team? Um, uh, there can be occasions when there are challenges with personalities. This is probably in any business with teams. Um, we find that those of us who've been in corporate, um, Part of my story was working my way up through the ranks um, as a secretary many moons ago, all the way to executive management. And I was there and thought that I could really make a difference. And um, I was not. I learned that I was not. And on that day, right, that day and the messaging, all of this worked together to say, I am here for a purpose to help other people get their mes message and their mission out into the world. Um, I'll give you another story. Let me go off the PowerPoint. I don't want to be in the PowerPoint the whole time. Let me give you another story. And this is uh, about delivering your message to your market. And this is a bit out of the box. Okay. But I'm, this is a great example. Um, 
I was so passionate about music and the arts is probably how I became a speaker many years ago. I want to tell you all, I hid behind my flute. Um, I studied silver flute, um, classical flute, and growing up, I now play different world flutes and Native American flutes and all this. I never thought I'd be a speaker is my point. Um, I kind of hid behind my flute for a very long time. And it began by um, doing arts advocacy because I didn't do it full time. I'm not uh, not a lobbyist or not you know that kind of thing. But I was an arts advocate, so I ended up speaking at city, county, state levels. Did presentations, created branding identity, um, all of this way before I really realized that this was part of my gift, right? My one of my foundational gifts. So I was getting ready to present again at the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors uh, public hearings. Now, these are given every year, they are three days. Imagine a panel of, of those supervisors who have to listen to people <laughs> give like no more than three minute talks all day long into the evening. I mean, there were times when supervisors were missing because they'd have to take a break, go eat, whatnot. So this is going on, you know, obviously Fairfax County is huge for those who are not familiar in Northern Virginia. Uh, which is in the in the Washington DC metropolitan area. It is um, a very well-to-do, very wealthy, very large um, community and, and county. So I decided um, that I was gonna play my flute instead of give them the usual, you know, I'm part of this board and I'm the mother of a, you know, an artist and I've been a teacher and a professional myself, professional flute player. And I introduced myself, many of them knew me because I had been working in the background for um, a, a number of years in the arts area. So they you know, might've known my face and might've known my, my name. And I, I said, I'm gonna introduce myself. I said, I'm gonna give you my music, my message in a different way. And I took my flute out from behind the podium and I played Danny Boy. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> when they were done, they all clapped and the head of the, the board said, Laura, you can have whatever you want, right? I did not know that the head of the board that time was Irish, right? I just thought Danny Boy's a nice, you know, short piece that I can play this. And, you know, meanwhile, I end up in the newspaper. Somebody brings to rehearsal the following week. I was a little embarrassed, but, um, and here's the deal. That county board supervisor is now a congressman. And I was at another arts gala event and he did all but run across the room to tell another state senator who was a huge arts fan and art supporter and artist um, about, you know, about me. Did she know that I play the flute? And she knew because we had pulled her on the board. I championed creating an entire board for one arts organization. Um, so that's an example of really taking your message and getting it out of the box, um, doing something that what what I wasn't about me, it was about I gave them the experience. You see what I did? Instead of the hundredth, you know, whatever person, thousandth person speaking, I gave them the experience of what, you know, music can do and live right there, you know? And so get creative, get creative with your messaging for sure. Now, if you, I want to share with you, you probably are already familiar with this. This is just the first 12 that I began with. Your messaging stretches across your entire business. Holy moly. So look at all of this, right? Your business name, your byline, what's your moniker or your title, your mission statement, your vision statement. Your introductions, everybody needs a one sentence introduction. I try not to tell people what they need, right? I hate when I hear that, but it it would it would so help you when you can encapsulate everything in one sentence. Um, your core messages, which feed into your programs, your high-end offering. Do you have a high-end offering? What do you want to do? Do you want to teach? Do you want to speak? Do you want to write? Uh, do you want to coach? Um, do you want to run a business? Um, do you want to create another uh uh, stream of income for your business, or another opportunity, do more products or services, you know, what is it that you really want to create? Um, how do you create social media that really um, penetrates the wide world of social media that, that we're already seeing, right? How do you do that without sounding salesy? Um, how do you get your message out there? And I'll tell you one clue is to create curiosity, 
right? To get somebody to think about something instead of saying, this is a solution or I have this or I can do this. It's it's not about us. And I know because I, I was in that painful place for a long time, right? It's not about us. It is always about your audience and what they want to achieve and where their pain is and where they would like to be. And can you help them close that gap? Um, creating materials, your messaging is, you know, I have more eBooks to come and more book books to come. And, you know, what are the core pieces of that? And can you, you know, put to create training material or courses that either is already recorded and it becomes evergreen or that you want to teach live or you want to teach online. You're, I mean, we all know this, if you wrestle with this, and I'm sure, you know, some of you have that, this is just for starters. These 12 pieces are just for starters, you know, but wait, there's more, you know, developing, not only developing your high-end program, but how you position that. What is, of all of your core messages, what is your signature talk? And do you want to give a TED talk? And then when you really go deep in this, you know, building sales funnels, which I do, not the technical part, obviously, um, but designing short and long-term sales pages, right? Creating copy that is that sounds unique, that speaks the way that you need to your audience, right? What is your brand voice? That's one of the things that I, you know, I work with with people is, you know, what is, how do you communicate with them and looking at how they write, how they create, how they convey so that we can kind of grow that um, and make that even more penetrating and more compelling and more exciting for their audience. Cause everybody's, you know, different. So what is, what is their style? So what's your why, you know, remembering that your message is driven by your why, why are you so passionate, right? What is it really, again, distilling that down? Who ultimately do you want to help? Now, it can be more than one group, but I'll give you another piece here. When you say who, it should be a group that you can you can define in two or three words. When you say, you know, let's say female business entrepreneurs who are between this age range and drive a, drive a Mercedes and do this, when you say who are, you're getting into your avatar, right? But you can have, you know, this topic, you know, uh, this target, two or three words, you can have this target, you can have more than one. When you're writing, you want to define your avatar, sit and say, you know, who are they really, you know, do they have plants, do they have animals, do they have a family, are they working, you know, you know, 60 hours a week, you know, are they working at home, you want to get really detailed, because when you write and you communicate, you want to actually picture your avatar right in front of you. That is the benefit and the blessing of having your avatar really clarified. Um, but you begin with your topic, again, is only two or three words, and your target market, only two or three root words. A lot of this is super simple. You go, we, you know, our minds and our businesses and people and programs out there want to make it really complex. Um, if you do, you, you won't, you won't have the clarity of the foundation that you need to build on, right? Where are they? Do you know how to find them, how to reach them? Where, you know, are they in a LinkedIn group? Are they in a Facebook group? Is it, you know, in-person gatherings that you can reach? You know, how do, we've got to be able to reach them. And I struggled for a while with, with one, you know, venture that I, you know, because I wasn't able to reach them. And so, you know, can you go in a different way? Can you find where they are in person? You know, do you know somebody who might be in their circle? Um, don't give up. Many of us have been on this, this path for a long time. Uh, don't give up. You're here for a reason and you've got great stuff. Everybody who's here on this call and who's watching this. Um, and how are you going to help them? Really those nuggets. And that can go into some of your core messages, which are the pieces, but then how is the delivery method, right? What does that look like? How many more connections could you make? How many more people could be drawn to you? And I've got dynamic messaging, not just messaging, but making it dynamic means making it really speak to the people that you want to connect with. Not everybody. I, I, I'm, I promise you, I've done a lot of lessons the hard way so that you all didn't have to, right? We go, oh, it's everybody. Well, if it's everybody, it's nobody. And I was, I fought that one for a very long time or, or my early days, I, I promise you. So it's 
what happens is you have to know exactly who you want to help. Okay. You will draw and attract other people. Absolutely. You welcome them. They're part of the process, but in order to market, in order to target your message, you've got to have an idea of who that is, of who you really want to begin helping with. Who's your, your number one community, right? Who is your number one group? You all have been fabulous today, and we're going to open it up in a bit with questions. I'm looking at the time. Um, but I have a gift for you here. Uh, and this is one of the ebooks that I've written and it's about your potential. And I think um, we're going to have the link in put in the chat box, Kaziah, thank you so much uh, for this. So it's really what you're going to have some questions at the beginning of the book, right, for you to answer and go deeper in, you know, what's really motivating you in and in what capacities, who are you getting down to that with, you know, some, some areas to fill in, and then it's going to give you three steps, right? And it's, you know, here's the, here's the confidence catalyst of the voice, amazing Diane Alexander. The first one is claim your gifts, but the second one is claim your voice, right? Claim your voice in whatever medium you are comfortable in, or you want to move into or grow. And then the third is, you know, you're a leader. We all talk about leadership, you know, take your message, you're leading your community, you know, you may be leading in other places, but it's really, um, you're a leader when you're taking your message out into the world. You're saying, hey, this is important. You know, these are the people who I'm helping. Um, and, and this is why, and this is how it's helping them. Uh, so you'll have that link. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop out of this in a moment. But again, this is me. When you master your message, you can move your mess mission forward. And that's what I'm all about, right? Moving the mission forward. Thank you so much, Laura. That was beautiful, informative, and filled with a message talk. And we really appreciate that. Now let's head on to our question and answer portion. We encourage the audience to ask questions by raising their hands on the screen or using the raise hand feature here on Zoom. So if you're called by the speaker, we will unmute you. And if you don't know uh, where that unmute, um, I mean, the raise hand feature is, feel free to unmute yourself. Somebody has to have a question. It's so you jump in with a question if it's for your business or something. Definitely. Oh, Diane yeah. has a question. <laughs> it's where's, it. yeah, where's yeah. the raise hand button? <laughs> I'm <laughs> that in the mute switch. That in the mute switch. Uh, what what I would love to um, uh, both both say and ask is that what you have really really helped me with is I have so many great ideas that I can't sort them out and when there are questions that say here what is this one thing I often can't answer them and what I want wanted to say to people is that when the pandemic hit, I got online. So I'm a fairly late comer to online work, not to what I do. I've been doing that for over 50 years. And it's like, we're supposed to be good at all of these things that we're not really good at. And we're supposed to hear, you have to know this and this and this and this. But when, when you have a, a mentor and a guide <clears throat> who can help you and say, and, and hone those questions in to, so that you can kind of clear away all this extra stuff or at least funnel it into one direction because there's so many aspects it's, it's like why do we say i want to help everybody we say i want to help everybody because there's so many pieces of us that know that we can but when you're going through the lens of meeting someone for the first time have you ever had someone that you met and they go blah all over and you go ew i have to go away and so what she helps us do is to get that crystal clear thing that really talks to the heart of what they're interested in, which is, the, uh, is what you want to deal with in the first place, right? That's what you want to gift. That's what you want to assist. And uh, all of the information, because we tend to want to over give in the beginning. We tend to want to give everything that we have through everything. And in my little sentence where I'm going to tell you what I do, I'm going to give you how I do it and how long it takes and how much it costs. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's that's really not the point for you to understand something that we we need those little sound bites are also something that people can remember and for me i have learned i thought i was good at this i'm not <laughs> it was it, it was amazing to work with laura and i have worked with a number of very highly respected people in the business but they just didn't jive with me they didn't get me and she stays with you to this point of, of, of clarity and I'd, I'd hate to sound like a commercial here but i'm kind of glad to sound like a commercial because it was like my most difficult thing and i think in my business like right now this is the single piece that's helping me go forward so much more quickly is having this sounded out because then all my marketing can go past it I can aim my speeches past it and it's like when you go from kindergarten up to other places those kindergarten entry levels need to be simple they need to be clear then once people are interested and excited then you add the other pieces to it and that if you're a copywriter maybe you're good at that but I really wasn't and uh, so could you speak a little bit to that simplicity the importance of that and dealing with someone like me who came with a million ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Diane. Um, so you've hit on so many important topics. And, you know, yes, we want to kind of give everything at once and we, we can't see the forest for the trees. It, it, imagine, and I'll start with this, imagine the challenge too of, you know, helping other people with this over the years. And I'm going to say over the decades and wrestling, struggling with it yourself. For me, right? Because I kept playing in, in things and, and they're kind of interrelated, but realizing that the messaging is actually the foundation. I went, oh my gosh, like this is this is the core thread through you know all these different, whether it's an individual client like Diane or you know, multi-million dollar businesses. It is, it can be very challenging, you know, the old phrase of to see the forest for the trees when it's our own stuff. You know, I, I, again, I walked away with a beautiful branding model and didn't know how to communicate it properly, right? I mean, I waited all that time to get that. So it's, for me, I see it as a puzzle and I, I, and I never liked jigsaw puzzles. That's even funnier part here, but I see it as a puzzle because, you know, like you, it's getting, I'll ask deeper and deeper questions with clients. So it's not just looking at a couple of their pieces I get on Zoom or I get in person and I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to say, so what does this really do for your community? Like wh where, where are their challenges really? And what else did you find? And what else, you know, and tell me about your pieces. How does it, how does it help them both generally? And then give me specific ways that it helps them, especially when you're going to build like a sales funnel, right? So I, you know, Diane is incredibly gifted with, you know, the confidence catalyst and these fear busting, you know, steps to building your confidence. As some of you may have heard, she has presented in, in EIN um, just last week. Uh, so it was an opportunity to really sit with that. And like, we created that one sentence. We played with some talk titles. What's most important is, okay, when you said, when we begin of really creating the foundation, People want to create these big, complex things with lots of languaging, and that's fine if that works, you know, for their market or that's what they choose to do. Somebody, if they're in a challenge, they they want to feel better and they want to know that you can help them get there, right? That doesn't happen with super fancy, you know, languaging, you know, long words and phrases and, you know, a million pages of, of whatever, they want to hear and know that you can take them out of that painful place that they are and get them to where they really want to be. That's all they want. That's all they want. We get excited about all the stuff we can do. They want to know that you can help them. And that needs to be done quickly. It needs to be done, I believe, compassionately and authentically and with integrity so that you know they they know that you're the one you're the one that can help them look at the field of people and businesses that we are in and mass messaging that we are facing right now our email boxes are full we remember when you know google created promotional inboxes holy cow and then social boxes inboxes so we don't even just have one inbox we have all of this uh, noise and you want to cut through that noise with something that is simple to say, I recognize this is your problem, you know, your challenge, 
And this is how I help my people. And, and that's simple. Does, does that answer your question, Diane? Does that help kind of elucidate? It really does. It really does. Thank you so much. You are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Earl we have got someone. a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll ask a question. So I've been trying to monetize my blog now for some time and it hasn't been very successful. Like when is the right time to move on to something else? Like how? <laughs> well, that's a great question. And I, I would go back to what I said earlier to, you know, one of my favorite lines, never give up, never surrender from Galaxy Quest. Um, but that's, you know, hopefully getting some input about, you know, what you could do with that, like what else is possible. And so I don't, you know, know exactly what you've tried, but we would look at like what you've tried and then what else is out there and doing research about how have other people, you know, monetized their blog and how has that worked. And there's, I'm not an expert at, you know, let's say paid advertising, um, I did play in Facebook ads some time back, but I found it interesting. Not only is it about really choosing, um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of ways to tailor your advertising. It's not only choosing who you want to reach, but it's excluding certain communities. So we think, you know, let's, that's another shift there, right? So who can you exclude to really get to more of the people who you might be able to reach? I have um, a discovery call, a free call that I'm happy to help anybody with. And maybe we, cause I, cause I could put that in the chat too. If somebody wants to hop on a 30 minute call with me. Uh, and if you don't see a time, just email me and say, Hey, I, can you, can you give me a, a better time? If some of those times don't work. So there I'd have to look at the whole picture, but don't, I just say, don't give up yet. And I know it's challenging. We've, I've spent years and, and decades getting where I am. <laughs> okay. I hope that helps give you some encouragement. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. We have another uh, yes, gentleman. Yeah, has a question. Okay. Can you uh, hear me? I can. And can you pronounce your first name for me, please? Sure. My name is uh, Earl. The C is just my last name. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay, Earl. I, I am totally new to this, and I am so glad that I um, attended this, and I've learned a pretty good amount of information in this short period of time. But a little bit about me. Um, I have 17 years of um, truck driving. Nine years of those has been owning my own truck, and um, I'm actually starting a um, like a software business to help truck drivers uh, find loads to increase their revenue, focus more on driving instead of looking uh, for loads themselves. And it reduces, you know, drivers downtime, thus maximizes profit. And so I've created, I'm in the process of creating a software that will work with the truck driver, that will work with the dispatchers and all of these things. And it's like, I'm, I'm excited about this, just like the last lady was saying how she was so excited. And one of the things that gave me a gut punch, I guess you could say, <laughs> learning something from you was, first of all, you said, you know, what is your mission statement? And uh, the second one was, uh, what do you do? And it's just like, I have all of this energy in me. And that I guess that's where I got choked up at is somebody walks up to me and say, okay, what do you do? What is your mission statement? And I got all these ideas. It's like, how do I, I, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to come at and say, but like, how do I put this in a short sentence to try to get, to grab someone's attention, if that makes any sense. I completely hear you. And, and I love it. I think the one sentence introduction is one of the most important things that um, I didn't have for a long time either. I, I think it can so help people because that begins the conversation, right? That's the starting point. And I love your idea and what you're doing. I mean, what a what a beautiful idea, you know, create, it's like a hub, right? With this software to be able to help others again, because you lived it, right? You That's lived right. it. So like, how do I help other people do a little bit easier what I lived? Um, and so I love the concept. Um, it's real. you, so I'm going to give you an example and, uh, 
I saw this in the movie, so I haven't researched it to find out if it was new, but do you remember, guys, any, anybody here see Julie and Julia? There's a movie based on Julia Child, okay? <laughs> when they were trying to come up with the title of her cookbook, in the movie, I love this, this is, I don't even know if it was a magnetic board or not, or just pieces of paper, they had different words. Now, the, actually, I did look it up and it said it went back and forth by letters because she was, you know, living in France at the time and the publisher was here in the, in the States. And, but they had words, they showed words on a board and they kept uh, rearranging them to try to find the right title. And it ended up being, oh, you're going to have to help me, Diane. It was like the mastery, uh, the joy, the ma mastering the joy of French cooking. Those were your three elements. Okay. So how, you know, I love to help people is we figure out like what all those pieces are. See, it's a puzzle. And then we say, you know, you've already, actually, you've already got it. I could just walk you through because I've done this now for a number of, of clients. So it's who, we, all right, you guys are getting a bonus today. You ready? We're getting a bonus. I am and your name. I help your target market in two or three words, okay? Achieve this, what you help them achieve. Maybe it's mastering their schedule and their business, whatever your words are, right? By doing this and how you do it. Okay. You put those four things in one sentence because you should always say, I am in my name, right? I am and I help or I guide or I support this target market, do this to achieve this or how you help them achieve it. Simple, not a paragraph, not three sentences, one sentence. Awesome. That's, it. That's what you, you do. Thank you. All of you, same thing for the question, is it Elkie? Same thing for you, right? I help this group do this in this manner and begin to share that message. And it's really too about creating curiosity. People wonder how, you know, you can convey things, create curiosity, get people thinking, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Maybe I need to have a conversation. That's how you do it. You don't tell people, you don't go out there and, and we don't blast the world with our stuff. We start to speak to where they are, what they want to achieve. Have they thought about this? Imagine this. I love the word imagine. It's a, it's a, opens up a whole nother gateway right? What if and imagine. You got to get people out of their stuff, man. Everybody, we're all going, you know, 100 miles an hour and trying to do a lot of stuff and trying to get our stuff out in the world. And we've got lives and got bills to pay and, you know, all this stuff. So. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Any other questions? And if anybody wants to hop on a discovery call, you are welcome to. Um, you're welcome. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Bring all your words with you. And so, you know, wordsmithing, this is, I'll leave you. There was another quote. Actually, my husband gave me this the other day. I love this. The, this is Mark Twain, by the way. <clears throat> the difference between the almost right word and the right word is a large matter. It's the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning. That's what we're all playing with, right? We're all here for purpose and trying to get our good works out into the world to help more people and be of service and be of divine service. So that's it. Your words and your messages are key, man. Any question? Oh, do we have one more question? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You know, you, you help with the wordsmithing and the messaging and, and you do branding as well? I do some branding. I'm, I don't consider myself a branding specialist, but I can look at things and review them and I'll look at colors. You know, people, colors is just part of it. It's your byline, your tagline and how the pieces kind of fit together. So some people have called me branding. Um, I've, I've, cre I've created it, haven't done the technical too in the past. But it's all it's all part of that. Now I wouldn't do specific technical design and things, but yeah, I can look at elements and I'll you know, I've got an intuitive piece as well, which Julie spoke to and Diane probably has as well, where you know we're looking at how all of these pieces kind of fit together, including your branding. 
and what that so, looks like. So if you were to hire hire you or if you if you were going, I'm going through a rebranding process and a new website and all that. So yeah. someone else would build the website, I'm assuming, because you don't do that, right? Correct. And, and then you would help with the words and the placement and the colors to make it all flow and connect with your your customer base then is that correct yes and i would and i would pull that out of you i would but i'm going to pull it because i'm going to talk to you and i'm going to ask you questions even if you've got stuff written down about your languaging and your message and your mission and we're going to have conversations where you know i'm going to take you deeper so that i can hear that and you know understand who your target market is and that can have an impact on your colors um, and you've all there you've got two great resources online fiverr and upwork and both of those, you can go find people and get some examples of, you know, hey, give me, you know, three runs on, you know, branding and color or logo and, you know, and have them put some things together and see if you like them and pay a reasonable amount of money. Thank you. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, this was delightful to be with you all today. I'm really, really, really honored to be featured in Entrepreneurs International Network, for sure. And to meet all of you here. So are we, Laura. We really loved your talk and all the information that you have shared with us. It was truly valuable. Valuable for a lot of entrepreneurs right now that is rebranding and want to start their own business. So if anybody would like to share their takeaways, I believe some has already uh, given them. But if you want to share more of what you've learned uh, with our speaker for today, or um, if you want to thank our speaker, please feel free to um, raise your hand or unmute yourself. We would love to hear it. I, I just want to thank you, Ms. Laura. It, it was very insightful and, and informational. And um, hopefully I plan on getting on a discovery call with you and see, see where it goes. But thank you. Okay, great. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. That was nice. And I believe um, some of the comments here in the chat also agree with that. The insightful uh, talk that you've given. And they're all thanking you. Great message for all of us from Rosa. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all of this information from Alki. Yeah. I just don't want people to have to struggle. <laughs> like some of us have for years and decades. <laughs> yes. You you ran so some entrepreneurs could walk. <laughs> there you go. Ran into some walls, I think, but. <laughs> It was amazing. Good. I'm glad. I'm I'm so happy. It was helpful. Right. So once again, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Laura, for sharing us um, your expertise and uh, this uh, valuable knowledge that you have um, compiled throughout the years. You know your experience. Yeah. And uh, thank you for sharing it with us and for our um, many entrepreneurs in the call. And thank you everyone for showing up at today's event. We really value your presence here. Our next event is gonna be on August 29th. I'm sorry, August 22nd uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific. And uh, we are going to have uh, Jennifer Yu uh, uh, Jennifer Huff talking about the physics of efficiency and productivity for visionaries. Just so to sign up for that, you can go to the URL that I will also put in the chat box. And um, if you want to uh, see more or, re or have a replay of this talk, we will send it over to your um, emails that you have registered with us. We will give you the replay of this talk. And uh, if you wanna go to the PDF link or to the discovery call link, we will also link it there. Once more, thank you so much, Laura, and thank you everyone. We will see you on the next event. Take thank care. You. Bye bye. Bye.